Working together with my administration over the last two years, these members have reached a bipartisan agreement. Did I hear the word bipartisan? <laughs> Is that did I hear Did I hear that word? Huh? That's a nice word. Bipartisan agreement on prison reform legislation known as the first step. And that's what it is. It's a first step, but it's a very big first step. Today, I'm thrilled to announce my support for this bipartisan bill that will make our community safer and give former inmates a second chance at life after they have served their time. How's everybody doing? My name is Anthony Brian Logan, and today we got to talk about House Resolution 5682. That is the First Step Act. This is a bipartisan bill. Everybody supports it. Well, not everybody. You know, you got Donald Trump on board. You got most Republicans on board, but some Democrats are not really on board. Your Maxine Waters, your Bobby Rush, your Elijah Cummings, your John Lewis, the list goes on. I'll place a few of them who voted against this in the House earlier this year on the screen before you. It was introduced to the House, I think, in the beginning of May and voted on at the end of May after an amendment. It's been further amended or there are proposed amendments to further strengthen the bill. These Democrats that were against it said that the original bill did not go far enough. And we'll get to what's in the bill and what it does in a moment. But it said it didn't address any kind of mandatory minimums and stuff like that. So they were against it. Although I don't recall Barack Obama doing any kind of prison reform. I mean, all he really did was amp up the amount of commutations you know getting dope boys and whatnot out of the penitentiary they've been in there for a while although he didn't get alice marie johnson out of jail when he had a chance to because it did come across his desk but i digress my point is that he didn't do a lot he did the commutations and he also tried to push for banning the box when you're talking about federal employees although he was not successful there's a you know a recommendation in the eeoc that says you shouldn't necessarily just totally cast them out of your way because they're a felon, but the box is still there. And that means if you have a felon on your record, they're going to ask you if you have a felony and you got to check that box there. Nay, that's still there. Although they say, like I said, to not have that be the end. And it's not a law. It's only a recommendation. It's a guidance. But let's keep going. This bill is something that Barack Obama could have done and he didn't do it. But the big bad racist the the bully, the meanie, the white supremacist Donald Trump was a guy that actually was able to get it done along with the House and the Senate. Let's look at the bill and see what's in it. This is from the firststepact.org and everything I'm talking about will be in the box below if you want to read it for yourself. Some of the First Step Act's prison reforms bans the shackling of pregnant and postpartum women, ensures people are placed in facilities within 500 driving miles from their families, creates an earn time credit system that allows people to earn 10 days of credit for every 30 days of programming and shorten their time in prison to be served instead of halfway houses, home confinement or on community supervision. So what that means is you're able to earn much more good time. You know, I know guys in jail they talk about good time and stuff like that. This allows them to earn much more. So that's a good thing rather than having it, you know, be sent out and still be locked up. You can just be sent out and be free compels the BOP. That's a federal bureau of prisons to match individual needs to programs, training and services so that men and women can return home job ready. Provides an ID card for every person when they are released. So this whole thing about, oh, you know, you can't vote because you don't have an ID. It costs too much. They'll give you one for free when you're released from the penitentiary. So I'm not really trying to hear this whole thing about, oh, I can't vote because I don't have no ID. You know, that, that that kills the whole thing about voter suppression and whatnot. They're trying to link against uh, Brian Kemp and George and other people. But let's keep going. Brings home 4000 people immediately due to retroactive good time credits. Like I was talking about earlier, people getting their good time in prison. This allows for a lot of people who are eligible to have good time retroactively applied. They can come home right now. So 4,000 people being sent free. Who's going to really be against that unless you're talking about a very violent criminal that shouldn't be out? 
The First Step Act's sentencing reforms. Number one, free judges from handing down disproportionate sentencing, i.e. 924C stacking. I'm not sure what the stacking is. I think that's when you get enhancements and stuff like that. When you're talking about the federal penitentiary, when you get crime on top of crime and it extends your sentence, that might be what that is. Number two, lower lifetime mandatory minimum sentences for people with prior nonviolent drug felony convictions to 25 years and reduce 20 year mandatory minimum sentences to similar offenses to 15 years. Apply the Fair Sentencing Act of 2010 which reduces disparity between cocaine and crack related offenses retroactively. So this goes back to, you know, the Clinton crime bill. This goes back to the late eighties, early nineties when crack was treated differently than cocaine because of the out of control crime. That is no longer the case. So we can go ahead and get rid of that right now and have more fair sentencing between the two drugs, which are really the same. Number four, expand exceptions to the application of mandatory minimum sentences to more people with criminal histories. So rather than it just being, you know, everybody that has a particular crime gets sent to the penitentiary under the mandatory minimums, more people will be eligible for exceptions to that particular rule. So the mandatory minimum is not so mandatory all the time. So that's bipartisan. It has support on both sides. Now, I wonder if the media is going to give the Trump administration credit for this, because like I said, this could have been done under Barack Obama. This could have been done in at a certain point in the whole eight years he was in office, but it did not get done. Why is that? I don't really know. Maybe a lot of these Democrats, like those who voted against this in the House, your um, well, Sheila Jackson Lees, your Maxine Waters, your John Lewis, maybe they don't want prison reform in reality. Maybe they want to have things remain the way they are in their communities. A lot of people that voted against this are in black areas and poor areas. Maybe they don't want it because they want to still be needed. You got career politicians, John Lewis, he's been out since 1987. You know, that's over 30 years, 31 years now. That area has been a ghetto for a long time. Maybe if you get prison reform, maybe if you get something that actually does good, and you can give Trump the credit for it, that would bring more people from the Democrats over to the Republicans or would at least kind of raise a question in their mind, like, wait a minute, I've been voting Democrat this whole time, but yet it was a Republican president, administration, and Senate that allowed me to get something that actually helped me. You know, if if not me, then maybe my cousin my grandma or somebody that's in jail, they're able to come home early. They're able to get a lesser sentence retroactively. Maybe I'll think twice about this whole Democrat thing. And that could be a pattern that exhibits itself all over the country. I don't really know. I'm just kind of throwing ideas out there because I don't see how anybody would be against it. If you have overwhelming support from the Republican Party for a thing that's going to actually get people lesser time in prison, this should be a thing that everybody is on board with especially the Democrats, it's weird how when things like this are passed, it usually comes at the hands of Republicans and the Democrats seem to be against it. So for rights was the same way. A lot of people think that Democrats were responsible for civil rights being passed. Yes, you had a Democrat president in there when it was passed. That was LBJ. But without Republicans, it wouldn't have happened. Democrats were more against civil rights than Republicans were. It seems as if Republicans are always on the right side of history, but you have Democrats in academia that like to rewrite history for some reason. I don't really know. Maybe it's because they want to keep themselves in power. I don't know what it is, but at the end of the day, as I close, I think that this is great. This is a great thing for Americans. Um, I'm a guy that believes that if you did the crime, do the time. However, some of the sentences are just kind of ridiculous. You got people that abuse kids and get out in five years. But if you sell drugs, you go for 20. I'm not saying that you shouldn't go to jail for selling drugs. I'm saying that maybe some things should just be a little bit more equal as far as the severity of it. If you're abusing a child, you should never come home. If you're selling drugs, maybe you should come home at a certain point. Maybe it shouldn't be the rest of your life. You go to the penitentiary. That is pretty much all I got to say. So what say you? Do you think that this is a good thing? The first step act. Um, should there be more done here? That was the complaint from the Democrats who voted against it. There should be more done. 
you should tear down mandatory minimums altogether. I think that when you have bipartisan legislation like the way it is here, you got to be able to please both sides. You can't just cater to the extremes on either side, all right? Because you may have on one side those who want to see everybody get locked up regardless of what it is. Oh, one thing I wanted to add before I close here, the Democrats also were trying to use Jeff Sessions as an excuse. They said that he's in there, he's against prison reform, so we don't want to have him have control over this or any kind of influence over this because we're not going to actually be able to get anything done. But now Sessions is gone, and miraculously this comes back up after being in the Senate for about five months. So what's the excuse now? There is no excuse. You can't be trying to obstruct this because you're getting a lot of what you want. You may not get all of what you want, but back to what I was saying about compromise, you're not going to get everything you want because some people on the extreme left are going to say, just basically let everybody out of jail, no prisons, no walls or whatever. The extremes on the opposite side may say, lock everybody up, regardless of what it is, 20 years for a joint in your car, meet right in the middle. And I think that is where the majority of both sides would like to be. But whatever your comments are, please let me know in the comments below. And that's all I got to say for this video. If you like what you heard, please comment, rate, share, and subscribe. Peace.